how you will own nothing and be happy. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to talk about how you will own nothing and be happy in the future. Particularly, well, how we're going to choose it ourselves. It won't be forced upon us. Now this, of course, is a prediction from the World Economic Forum. Everyone's favorite annual meeting or the, the Davos conference is the annual meeting of the world elite and our betters. So I thought we'd have a look at the, well, propaganda clip, frankly, that the WEF put out a few years ago that highlights this idea. So eight predictions for the world in 2030. And I've, I've muted out the music. You will, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy, okay? You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. And there's, there's uh, Klaus in the background there telling you that. I'm, we'll have to have a look. And honestly, I, I suspect this prediction is quite accurate. We're really heading that way and it has some dangerous implications. Whatever you want, you'll rent and it'll be delivered by drone. You know, you won't buy anything or consumer goods. You'll be renting and we're starting to see it manifest more and more. The US won't be the world's leading superpower. A handful of countries will dominate. Well, it's definitely going to be an interesting time moving forward geopolitically. You won't die from organ from an organ donor. They'll 3D print. They'll print new ones. Yeah, we'll see. This one I really like. This, uh, well, really dislike. You'll eat much less meat. An occasional treat, not a staple. And that's, see, this is where this is proven wrong. It's not for the good of the environment. Monocultural farming is terrible for the environment. The vegan diet is terrible for the environment. The Franken food processed rubbish. The alternative meats are terrible for the, for the environment and for people's health. Just if you want to look up a chart on where seed oils were introduced and heart disease, and then you'll find out what the real problem is. And look at what you're eating. So don't fall. For, this is what this scares me more than owning nothing. A billion people will be displaced by climate change. We'll have to do a better job of welcoming and integrating refugees. Well, one thing would be, you know, providing a capacity and expectation that when people move to another country, they learn the language. It's ludicrous. You've got these, you've got isolated communities in a, another country, and they just recreate a, a culture. They don't integrate. So they're right there. Polluters will have to pay to emit carbon dioxide, you know, attacks everyone. The elites want to attack everyone, uh, want to uh, tax everyone. Well, we'll see if China will have to pay that. What do you think? A global price on carbon that will help make fossil fuels history. We'll, we'll see about that. Hopefully we'll have a nuclear age, but somehow, well, there's too much fear about that. And we could be preparing to go to Mars. And of course, the number one currency on Mars will be Dogecoin. So, you know, they're, they're, these are the reasons. What's number eight as well? Checks and balances for democracies must not be forgotten. Mm, ironic, considering what's happened recently. But nevertheless, this is where you will, you know, one of their predictions that you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. So what's happening here? We're turning into a world of constant subscri subscriptions of monthly payments. Here's, here's an example. You know, Netflix, you hire your entertainment, you subscribe to it. Autodesk, your software. I'm an architect. We bought, when we first started up, I think we bought one copy of uh, Graphisoft uh, Archicad and one of Rivet. And we ended up sticking with Rivet. So, you know, we'd be paying, paying every year a, a fee. So we'd get the latest version of the software. And in the end, it, would, it was costing thousands of dollars, six, seven thousand dollars. And this is after we spent 40 grand buying the software outright. And you can't sell it. You can't sell it. You buy a license to use it and your company owns it. It needs to go with your company. Now what they've moved towards, you can't even get these perpetual licenses anymore. And I've stopped upgrading them. I've got a whole lot of Ribbit 2019 versions. And I have to rent my software now, so I don't own it. I never really did. I owned a license to use it. This is really, uh, it's, it's 
starting in the software sector and it's starting to to push forward if we've got insurance we're already used to that you know food food hello fresh isn't just one example of these subscription services where you get your food delivered to you and i know it's convenient and it's cheap and it has advantages but it's another example home ownership even when we have a mortgage you're still paying the bank you know ea play computer games I, I, I can't remember the last time i went and bought a physical computer game you know I, i'll buy them on steam or, or good old games those type of things and download them it's just more convenient i don't have anywhere to store the boxes I, I can't be bothered when you actually go and buy a physical box you just get a code for steam <laughs> in it anyway but the next step is where you just subscribe and you will stream your games down so this is what's happening and people are approaching to it and, and well what's the danger to it are we going in some cyberpunk uh, dystopian future where even your healthcare or your pacemaker as an argument would be leased or rented from a provider and then what happens if you miss a payment and this is an article where vice are talking about it and i uh, lewis rossman did a video on this so i thought this ties in exactly to what the great reset is predicting will happen in 2030 and i think we will choose it it won't be forced upon us so this motorcycle airbag vest will stop working if you miss a payment okay it'll stop working if you miss a payment so charging extra for safety features is nothing new but actively disabling them for missing payments may be the future can you see this happening everyone so the ai1 airbag vest an electronic autonomous motorcycle airbag vest i didn't even know these things exist i mean it makes a lot of sense if you're riding on your bike you want whatever you can to help you uh, you drive past these guys and they're wearing nothing <laughs> they don't care so you know airbag vests are pretty much exactly what they sound like garments worn by people who undertake exceedingly dangerous personal hobbies in order to slightly reduce the risk of severe bodily harm or death for example in 2018 the motorcycle racing circuit and moto gp made airbag vests mandatory since then airbag vests have become steadily cheaper and therefore more popular among recreational riders one motorcycle apparel company named klim for example sells an airbag vest called the ai1 for 400 dollars. that's i mean that's pretty cheap is it that much you'll, you'll be paying that for a good leather jacket going on your bike wouldn't you how much would you pay for a helmet it's been a long time since i've read i've been on a motorbike in the promotional video launching the product product line manager manager jason Plummer called the vest a whole new era of a platform where analog meets digital and results in a superior protection story which is an interesting way of framing the fact that the vest includes an additional subscription based payment option that will block the vest from inflating if the payments don't go through what, wow what what if what if you've got this vest you've made your payments but there's a communication error or there's a bug in the software so it stops it from inflating can you see that and how would they ever prove it this is possible because the invest includes two components the vest in itself made by klim and the airbag system including a small black box made by a french company called in and motion the in and box detection module the module has the sensors and computer components that detect a crash and make the bag inflate the customer buys the vest for 400 dollars, which comes with the module but then they must download an app and choose how to unlock the module so the vest actually works either plonk down another 400 dollars to own the whole shebang outright bringing the total cost to 800 or as Plummer puts it in a video opt for the subscription based model of 12 dollars per month or 120 dollars per year i mean what do you think everyone do you think it's a a bad you know classic is buying it outright owning it for life but what if you only want the option to to try it out for some time you know or what if you're only going to go for a, a motorcycle ride for a period i mean I, yeah i i can see both sides to it i really can i can see both sides to it. this is providing a product which would have cost 800 to a thousand dollars you'd say at about half the price to someone that can then choose to make a monthly payment and this is why this is why we will own nothing and we'll be happy i mean i i don't get me wrong i hate i hate subscription services i i don't do them if, if i have to there's only two i 
will occasionally use. One is for my Rivet software. That's uh, for when I have clients that demand the latest version of the software. I will include that into the fee and just rent it for that, that project. And the other is my point cloud uh, meshing software. When, if I have a scan job and I need to stitch it together as opposed to just, just a rental job, I will hire it out for that month. So it's $55 rather than me paying for the software outright. And that kind of works out. So I can see why this could, but could you imagine your pacemaker missing your pacemaker payments? Oh, there's, there's going to be duty of care issues here when this comes into health, health, um, products. Oh boy. It, it will get messy. We'll see. In the video, Plumber promotes this as a good option for people who don't ride year round and therefore only need a functioning vest a couple of months a year. But when Motherboard asked Klim about what would happen if, say, the customer forgot to turn the subscription back on and got into a crash, a customer service representative confirmed then no, it will not go off. Likewise, if the customer's card is declined, they will have a 30 day grace period to update their payment information before the vest stops working, according to Klim communication manager, Lucas Eddy. Well, you gotta pay. I'm surprised. Why don't they just put a credit card tapper on there so you can tap for every time you ride your motorbike? Wow. When it comes to missing payments the and airbag functionality, in in motions payment notifications and 30 day grace period are reasonable at some point. If a person stops paying for a service, that service has to be suspended, just like your utilities or a cell phone plan, Eddie wrote to Motherboard in an email. Further, if someone pauses their subscription and forgets to restart it, they won't actually be able to get their in and box into ride ready status when they go to turn it on. If they then choose to ignore the indicators and ride with the in and box inactive, that's on them, and we can expect it to not inflate in the event of a crash. So it tells you if it's not going to work. You know, so I mean, here's the thing. It sounds. What's the update? The article was updated with comments from Klim's. Okay, okay. So they published it, and then they got some updates from them. Car companies are increasingly seeing dollar signs at the prospect of paywalling features that need to be unlocked via software update. It is so easy for me to imagine automakers paywalling airbags, just like motorcycle vests do, if it wasn't federal law pro provided them. Well, you know, so think of the paywall motorcycle airbag as just another glimpse of how much worse our late capitalism horror, I mean, this is vest, would come without the previous generations of lawmakers on both sides of the political spectrum understanding the importance of regulation. Well, here's the thing. What you're essentially getting is you're getting credit from this company. They're providing you credit so you can use the service. What do you reckon? everyone do you think this is a good thing or this is a bad thing is the vice journalist being a bit hyperbolic and dramatic if you choose to not you, you know if, if you can get something cheaper and just go on a monthly subscription and then maybe instead of paying you know paying 120 bucks a year maybe you only want a motorcycle for a few years you want to try it out and you invest that money in something else i, I can see both sides and i can see how this is going to be popular i can see how we will end up end up Owning nothing, owning nothing, and being happier. What do you reckon? I mean, I'm not a fan of subscription services, guys. They're the one thing I suggest uh, to look at that can really rack up really quick. Oh, wait, I forgot another one. I've got Microsoft. I've got Office 365. I've got the two full duper versions of it where we've got Access and everything, and even SharePoint. And, you know, I've looked at decanting off them when I when I... You know, when we scaled back our business, I really went through every single subscription and service and, and saw what I could decant. I got off my, um, I had Azure database. I've got off that. I went to open source one. I pretty much got off everything, but just taking that last step away from office for the cost, it's not worth it for me. But, you know, what do you reckon? Are we just one step away from the pacemaker? requiring the credit card tap every day and you think you'll be happy with this would you rather pay for bits and pieces bits and pieces let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one guys because I, I honestly i think it comes back to the solution i would suggest is increasing financial literacy that's what we need to do people need to understand what decisions they're making if you think oh wow the 12 dollars, okay maybe I, I just want to try it out and then i'll buy it outright later 
or maybe no you know what i'm sticking with this it's going to be cheaper in the long run to pay it in one hit if people have more financial literacy and more capability then they won't fall victim to these things and they'll be you know doing the sob story on the news they'll be empowered to take agency and control of their own lives what do you reckon as always let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below thank you all for watching please like share and subscribe to the channel if you're a fan and enjoy the content i created there are a few ways you can support us you can join us on youtube or patreon support us on self wealth or stake use our affiliate links at amazon ebay independent reserve or aussie broadband you can buy our merch from heiser says use gold pass from the perth mint or support us via paypal take care everyone have a great day and i'll see you in the next episode bye for now